Welcome sa e-school ng bayan. Andito ako para samahan kayong mag-review. Tara, aral! Hi guys! In this video, i-discuss natin kung paano i-translate ang words into algebraic expressions and equations. So bakit kailangan natin itong matutunan? Kasi in many applications of algebra, yung problems natin are actually stated in words. So kahit marunong tayo mag-manipulate ng algebraic expressions and equations, pero hindi natin alam kung paano natin i-translate properly yung words into expressions and equations, medyo wala yung sense. So it's important na medyo bihasa tayo sa pag-translate ng words into algebraic expressions and equations. So let's start by defining the difference between algebraic expressions and equations. When we talk about algebraic expressions, we refer to a constant, a variable, or a combination of variables and constants. So for example, we have 245. Ito ay isang constant. How about x? x is an example of a variable. And lastly, we have x squared plus 3y minus 11, which is a combination of both. Okay? The um, equation naman is actually two expressions that are equal to each other. For example, x is equal to x squared plus 3y minus 11. So here, ano yung dalawang expressions natin? First, we have yung x and then we have yung x squared plus 3y minus 11. So, a giveaway sign na ito equation at hindi expression is kapag meron tayong equal sign. So, let's proceed to some common examples ng algebraic expressions. So, in order to identify or to translate these words into algebraic expressions, kailangan aware tayo sa mga keywords. For example, pagdating sa addition, meron tayong keywords like sum of, plus, added to, increased by, more than, and older than, which will tell us na yung operation na dapat natin gawin is addition. So let's try to translate these phrases into algebraic expressions. First, we have the sum of a number and 8. Dito, meron tayong dalawang quantities, which is a number at yung number 8. So ano yung unknown natin dito? Yung number. Since unknown yung number natin, i-assign natin ito as x. So the sum of x and 8 in algebraic expression, that would be x plus 8 or 8 plus x. Bakit pwede ito? Kasi in addition, nag apply ang commutative property. Next is sum of 3 numbers. Dito meron tayong ilang unknown, 3 unknowns, which means kailangan din natin ng 3 variables. Let's say, gamitin natin ang variables x, y, and z. The sum of three numbers would be x plus y plus z. Okay, last example, we have a number increased by 7. So, meron tayong dalawang quantities ulit. Isang unknown at isang known quantity. Ang ating unknown ay isang number, let's say x, increased by 7. That would be x plus 7. Okay, how about pagdating sa subtraction? Subtraction naman, ang ating keywords ay difference of, minus, subtracted from, decreased by, less, and less than. So, for our first example, meron tayong 5 less than a number. Meron tayong dalawang quantities ulit. At ang unknown natin is a certain number, x, 5 less than that number. So, ibig sabihin, subtract natin ang 5 from that number. We will have x minus 5. How about if we say 5 less a number? Ibig sabihin, we have number 5 minus or less a certain number x. So we will have 5 minus x. I hope nakikita niyo yung difference ng dalawa. When we say 5 less than a number, we will subtract 5 from that number. Kapag sinabi naman natin 5 less a number, ibig sabihin 5 minus a number, which is 5 minus x. Next example here, we have 13 subtracted from y. Subtracted from y. So, ibig sabihin yung 13, ibabawas natin sa y. So, we will have y minus 13. Okay, last example for subtraction. We have a number subtracted from 7. Ibig sabihin, yung unknown natin, yun yung ibabawas natin from 7. So, 7 
minus a variable. In this case, let's use x. So 7 minus x. So that's it for subtraction. Let's move on to multiplication. Ito naman ang ating keywords pagdating sa multiplication. We have product of times, twice, thrice, quadruple, etc. Multiplied by, and then we have half of, two-thirds of, three-fourths of, etc. Okay, so let's try translating these phrases into algebraic expression. 25 times a number. So 25 and a number, that would be 25 times x or 25x. How about twice a number? Twice, ibig sabihin, two times, we will have 2x. Half of 12. Okay, yung keyword natin dyan is of ha. That would be half or one half times 12. Lastly, we have product of two numbers. Dito meron tayong two unknowns, so we need two variables, x and y. We will have x times y or xy. Let's move on to division. Ang keywords natin dito ay quotient of, divided by, and ratio. So, i-translate natin ang 15 divided by x. So, when we say 15 divided by x, yung 15 ang hinahati natin. Kaya 15 divided by x or 15 over x. Next, we have ratio of two numbers. So, meron tayong two unknowns. We will use two variables, x and y. We will have x divided by y or x over y. Quotient of 9 and a number. So, since hindi naman na-specify, i-assume natin na yung first na na-mention na number or na quantity would be our dividend and yung next one would be the divisor. So, ang ating expression dito would be 9 divided by x or 9 over x. So, that's it for our algebraic expressions. So, pagdating naman sa actual word problems natin, ang ginagamit natin actually are algebraic equations. So, here is a guide kung paano natin ito i-apply pagdating sa ating word problems. Kasi pagdating sa ating word problems, hindi lang naman expressions ang meron tayo. Meron tayong complete sentences that will give us equations. So, first, read the problems carefully and identify all the conditions. Next thing you're gonna do is determine the unknown and unknown quantities. So, kapag alam mo na kung ano yung mga unknown quantities, you will use a variable to represent one of the unknown quantities. And then, if possible, try to use the same variable to express the other unknown quantities in algebraic form. Okay? Kasi mas madali siya kapag isang variable lang yung nakikita natin. Pero kapag iposible naman, syempre, we will use more than one variable. So in most cases, in most word problems, one variable is enough. And then lastly, i-determine natin yung relationship ng quantities na ito so that we can form an equation. Okay, so i-apply natin to sa ating examples. Here we have the quotient of a number and the number minus 9 is 2. So meron tayong dalawang quantities dito na dinivide natin kasi keyword quotient. So what are these quantities? We have a number, let's say x, and the number minus 9, which is x minus 9. So, ito yung ating unknown quantities. So, ano naman ang ating known quantities dito? We have our quotient, which is equal to 2. Now, we're done assigning our variables and identifying our quantities. So, ngayon, alamin naman natin kung anong relationship ng quantities natin. Keyword, quotient. So, ibig sabihin may dalawa tayong dinedivide. Ano to? Yung x and x minus 9. In this case, since yung quotient natin is 2, which is greater than 1, ang ating bigger number, which is x, ang ating magiging dividend, or yun yung ating i-divide by x minus 9. So we will have x divided by x minus 9 is equal to 2. Okay, how about this one? If 16 is subtracted from a number, the difference is 48. What is the number? So, similarly, identify natin yung quantities natin and mag-assign tayo ng variable. Since yung ano natin dito is a number, we will assign that as x. We will have 16, x, and 48 as our quantities. So now, ano naman yung relationship ng ating quantities? Or ano yung operation na involved? 
since we have the keywords subtracted from and difference, ibig sabihin, we will subtract two numbers to get 48. In this case, we are subtracting 16 from x. So we will have x minus 16 is equal to 48. Next example, the larger of two numbers is 9 more than the smaller. Their sum is 53. So in this problem, meron tayong dalawang unknown quantities, which is a larger number and a smaller number, and isang known quantity, which is the sum equal to 53. So let's assign the smaller number as x, while the larger number is x plus 9, since larger of two numbers is 9 more than the smaller. And then yung ating known quantity will just remain as 53. So, ang keyword natin dito is sum. Ibig sabihin, we will add these two numbers to get 53. We will have x plus 9 plus x is equal to 53. That's it for our examples. I think you're now ready for a quick quiz. So, here's your quiz, guys. I hope you will try to do this on your own. The answer to this quiz will be on the next video. Thank you!